In today's video, I'll show you how I made the Omega Thrust Vector Control Mount for the AeroFlight computer to control. I printed these parts on my Ender 3 and later in this video, I'll show you how I designed these parts. I removed them from the bed and then I removed their support material. Then I screwed the inner gimbal to the engine tube. Next I screwed the outer gimbal to the inner gimbal. Next I inserted the servo motors and I fastened them with more screws. Next I inserted linkage stoppers into the engine tube and into the inner gimbal. Then I connected them to the servos using 1mm push rods. And finally the thrust vector control mount was done. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the basic design principle behind this uh, TVC mount. So starting off with how it gimbals the Y-axis, we have the Y-axis mount, also known as the inner gimbal. And what this does is it has the engine tube inside the inner gimbal, and the engine tube can pivot with screws that go into that hole and that go into this hole. And the actual movement comes from this servo, the Y-axis servo, and there is going to be a linkage stopper here and a push rod going from the servo to the linkage stopper. So when the servo moves, it'll pull and push on this little piece right here, end up pivoting this engine tube on the y-axis. The way it's going to gimbal on the x-axis is by gimbling the entire y-axis. The entire y-axis can pivot on this screw, and it can pivot on this screw too. And... Essentially, this servo is firmly mounted against the body tube, which screws in from these two holes. So when this servo moves, there's going to be another linkage stopper here. It's going to be able to push and pull on the entire Y-axis, which gimbals from these two screws. And since the movement of these servos are perpendicular, you can have um, two axes gimbling for the engine. Okay, the code for this isn't too crazy. All it really has to do is uh, take the values from the IMU and uh, send that exact value to the TVC mount. So if the IMU changes by one degree, then the uh, TVC mount should change by one degree also. You can't actually have a negative value on the 9G servos that I'm using. You can have like 1 to 160 or something like that. So what I did is I set both servos to 90 degrees before the program really started running. And this allows me to have 89 and 91, but I can think of 89 as a negative one, and 91 as just one. So the library I'm using for the MP6050 brings back the values in degrees, and it's not gonna come back as 91 or 89, it's gonna come back as one, negative one, it's not going to come out as the values that I want. So what I'm going to do is actually add 90 to whatever I'm receiving from the MPU 6050. And uh, I'm, just, I'm just inverting the y-axis here. So when I do this, if the IMU is getting negative 1, it's going to add negative 1 to 90. And 
if you're adding a negative number, you're really just subtracting. So you subtract 1 from 90, and you get 89. And 89 is the value at 1 if it really is negative 1. It's extremely simple code. There's pretty much no way you can mess this up, even though I did six times. So that's basically the whole code. Okay, so I've put the computer inside this little piece of body tube to represent the uh, rocket's avionics bay. I did this because I wanted to test out the TVC mount. Okay, here I have the Omega TVC mount, and I'm gonna align the computer and the TVC mount's axes. Copies all the movements, so. There's no PID algorithm running on this right now. Um, all it's doing is adding 90 to whatever value it's receiving from the IMU, and then just sending that value to the servos. You want to see the actual mechanism at work? Okay, so I've recreated the essential parts of the Airfly computer onto this breadboard, and it's time for the montage. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, and as always, thank you and goodbye.